Hello, everybody. I'm going to do a really a moderate length video, I think, on on this character. If it loads up here. I had uh, made a a wizard 12 six barbarian two fighter build and I guess the the inspiration behind this was a was a critical hit that got uh, registered on a YouTube video for like 74 thousand points of damage but when I built this up then in the wraith form I realized that it was impossible to get to that uh, that number because of the mix of classes so in the meantime it was like I'll just do this because I like doing wraith uh, melee kind of a part of DDO that uh, most of the uh, melee types don't play because they don't like undead. So we'll do a character breakdown. This is at level 30. And I'm going downstairs to our cargo hold here. It's a lot less noisy down here. So, standing down here, and I open up the character sheet, and you can see that mix again up at the top, where my mouse is pointing. Excuse me, I had to belch. <laughs> Wizard 12, Barbarian 6, Fighter 2. And this is just standing right now without any buffs. I haven't done any clickies. Part of the fun with playing the Wraith or a Wizard is that you can self buff. So I, let's see, armor class is kicking at 139. Not a whole lot of chance to dodge on this because I am wearing heavy armor. Uh, it doesn't really. You know, I'm not real 100% sure on all of the uh, math on, on dodge and its percent, but I don't get to dodge because I'm loaded down. My max dexterity bonus is only at a plus 10. This is mostly strength and constitution based. I started with a 20 on the strength. As a half orc, you get to do that. And otherwise, I mean, if you did like a PDK or something, you probably could start at 18 and be fine. What's the, you're only getting a plus one difference there in the a total amount of strength later that you could get. Um, Constitution, I think I started at 18 too. And I dumped all of my points along the way in leveling, I think, into strength as well, except for maybe one Constitution. No, this would read 19. Or maybe I did start at a 17. Man, I don't know what I did. Yeah, I brought my intelligence to 10. And I think in the end, you end up having to take one point of con, even on a legend build, if you want to take epic toughness for the feat. Now, some people don't like that feat, but it is 50 extra hit points uh, for me, and I'll look at it under legendary feats, and maybe I did not do that this time. That's certainly another option. I'm getting off the uh, character build here out of order a little bit in my rambling, but that's where I'm at right now. Again, this is standing unbuffed. 
So I will look and open the enhancement trees to show how this got broken down. Over in the left is your half work tree and I had to dump two points in here because I have enough racial TRs uh, for two points. So I just started it off with the orc fury and I took this other one for a bonus to my will save stubborn. I want to get into the orcish weapon training obviously but it's two action points to get started per every one of these tiers. It's good to have this when you you know, when you're wielding two-handed weapons. This is a great tree. It also works very well with quarter staffs. So then I have a Kinsai fighter up here. I did not spend any points into it because I'm over in the other trees. And again, uh, when I had done a 12-8 mix, being 12 wizard, 8 fighter, this was was maxed out for your primary Kensai focus with whatever weapon you wanted to go use. It's awesome. What I really like is the third tier of it in the Kinsai. Uh, this gains you a competence bonus to your critical damage multiplier. And that's kind of a big deal, but it requires six levels of fighter. So obviously on this build, I only had two levels and not enough points. So here we are in the two core trees for the wizard, uh, be a Eldritch Knight and the Pale Master. Now, in order for this to be undead, you have to get up to the fourth tier. And this is the form that you want. These other forms down here, I'm not such a big fan of. I've gone over that before. The Wraith form, to me, offers the best uh, mix of offensive and defensive things and some some other abilities that are that are good to have because it doesn't require you to have it loaded on gear like the 25 percent chance in in corporality forces a different role when you're getting striked or getting attacked in melee of a chance to miss then blur and dusk effects and displacement. That's always on, so you don't have to worry about a clicky for it. I like that. Next is is the ghost touch ability. You don't need to take any or any items that give you ghost touch. You, you're already a incorporal creature and you gain the ability to strike those uh, mobs uh, normally. So that's just like always on too. No need to switch weapons or take a feat for it. I like it. And then on critical hit, your attacks deal 1d6 constitution damage to the victim if it is not immune to it. Like, undeads, you're not going to be able to hit with that. And lastly, because of the form benefit, you're only at 100%. Um, or should I say, you're only at double damage from light effects instead of triple. Now, that is the drawback for being in Wraith form. Like, there's no way to skirt really around that except for get... Uh, some kind of light resistance item later and it happens I as a melee in the game you want to target any cleric any any caster that is divine or or has the potential to damage you greatly with light and then as a bonus defensive thing you have 100% critical hit resistance automatically that stacks with whatever fort 
item that you have. It's some really nice defensive feature, uh, you know, because a lot of the mobs in the game have been bypassing fortification or sundering you, which is lowering your fortification for a certain amount of time. Make sure that, it, you know, helps you not to get critically hit. In this tree, I only took it up uh, to the third tier here and grabbed this constitution point. Now, just by looking at this, I might dump this point because it cost me two action points and take something over here from the Barbarian. Uh, I can get the Furious Rage. And Barbarian Power Attack Damage. One more if I want to dump that one comm point. It's something I can tweak later. And I was also trying to find other stuff in here that I didn't want to get more points. Uh, just to to make sure that they weren't not being used. Okay, so we'll move on to... Where did it go? Frenzy Berserker is what I am in. And I opened up right next to it the Ravager tree, which is... For me, being undead, the abilities don't work uh, for the healing. So, like, if you were going to make a, like, a living barbarian, uh, you would probably want to take some stuff out of here to self-heal. And, like, up here at the top, I have the blood strength open right now. I'm saying each time you land a hit, there's a 12% chance you heal positive damage equal to half your Barbarian level. And then some other bonuses there. And then they also have another strike up here that's giving you... Um, oh, what is the other ability that's in here? I don't know where it is. But it's giving them more healing, like 100 or something a hit. But since, like, again, since I'm undead, I didn't go into that tree. Now, Ravager is what I would take if I was on the living side. And it's because of this tier 5 um, competence bonus to critical threat range. Um, that's not for the crit multiplier. So, in the Frenzied Berserker tree... I've made it up to the fifth tier. I had, you know, barely had enough points to eke out. And I took these two. The Raging Blows. That's a plus five melee power. Add your melee attacks. Gain one to the weapon damage. And I took this guy. Focus Wrath. Um, while Raging... It increases the critical multiplier of all your weapons you use by an additional one. When you roll a 19 or 20, that is confirmed hit, bringing the total to two. Now, there's if you take it one time, you'll get a one. If you take it the second time, Focus Wrath, you'll get plus two on a 19 or 20. And this was the whole purpose, is trying to raise that uh, base critical multiplier a roll of a 19 or 20 as high as you could get it. Now, the other Barbarian trees don't do that. This one is for the range. So, you know, maybe if I did do a Human Barbarian, I would probably stick with this. I like to, to know that I'm doing maximum possible on those two die rolls. And yeah, you lower your range, but, uh, you know, Horse of Peace is trying to get that 74,000 uh, critical hit out of it. Okay, Occult Slayer is open here. There's no point spending it. So here's my tier 5. The Eldritch Knight tree. These points got spent to lower arcane spell failure in Wraith form and wear heavy armor. The medium armor proficiency gives you a 5%. The light armor proficiency gives you a 5%. And down here at the bottom, you get 
spell failure from the second tier and from the fourth tier which I have selected acid strikes or electrical or fire and the first tier is gaining you double strike and universal spell power everybody loves double strike chance Wizard Eldritch Knight Tree is great for monks with their double strike or any character that is, you know, really trying to max that out. There's all kinds of things in here to boost their damage, like martial training. There's another two. All these things stack up, so... I took it mostly to get the Arcane Spell Failure down, but it comes with other benefits like the improved mage armor and improved shield clicky so you don't have to use an item or whatever as a clicky in the beginning for shield get immunity to magic missiles there or well most of them I am going to open up the character sheet. Standing base, attack bonuses, um, double strikes at 13% right now. Uh, I am not really specking my gear 100% into working that up. And I know 9% of it is coming from past life feet. Uh, martial tier uh, double strike times three. That's a epic TR feat. So that's nine. The other four points are coming from these tiers and that double strike right there. I also noticed in Barovia that there's a there's a couple of nice items to boost that gear wise. Maybe I would, you know, later take some time to uh, craft or work the gear around to get it maybe to 25. At least a quarter quarter of your hits would be could have the potential to register. Um, the other past lives that I have active are the Shatter, Shatter Kai. This is only taken once. Big deal. You turn yourself into a ghost if you get hit. get incorporality for 25 or for six seconds per stack of this feat so for six seconds i get a f something that's useless because i'm already incorporal the double strike as i just mentioned um colors of the queen three and power over life and death uh is is from the divine sphere three times 10 positive and 10 negative energy spell power per stack of this past life feat. So that's to help my personal heals. And enchant weapon 3. Uh, I have all my forms over here on the right. Shroud of the Wraith is active. And then the other two forms are there just if I want to screw around. Usually I don't put them in there. And we will open up feats. Uh, what did I do? Because I got everything. Um, I have most of my tiers uh, done in the Epic Destinies. Except for the uh, Arcane Destiny Sphere. So that opens up. Huh. That opens up the Divine Sphere, and I took Holy Strike. This ability will give you Ghost Touch 2, if you're having problems with that. Um, but I like the 10d6 extra untyped damage versus evil. Legendary Feats. I took the Sky, Skyon of Arborea. 
on this. Mm. The melee and the range power is the main purpose, but the secondary on this build is the force spell power and the 20 universal spell power. The plus two enchantment bonus of my weapon, I'm not sure if it's stacking with the uh, past lives up there. I would look at my weapon as something I didn't uh, plan on going over uh, for this video purpose. The martial sphere, I took first blood. And that's 50 to 300 bane damage against enemies with 90% or more hit points. So it's your first initial strikes. And primal sphere, perfect two handed fighting. Blinding speed. I don't have to cast haste anymore. This is not stacking with your other haste effects. In fact, I have a useless spell down here in my hotbar right now. Um, on earlier builds, I actually did not take the blinding speed. And I think that's what I did is I ended up swapping it out for, uh, for, uh, what is the hit point one? Uh, it's not in here, so I didn't do it this time. And it's because I could self-cast haste all day long. You know, before fights, I was like, well, is it really worth it to even not take it? The 15% enhancement bonus to attack speed is what you're really after in trying to keep up with Zergers. So you could self-do it. Now, because I'm in Wraith form anyway, I'm a little bit slower uh, in the movement than a lot of the other characters in the game. There's no way you're going to be running as fast as a true living barbarian or a monk. So that's what I got there. Um, what happened to the other feats? Overwhelming critical. There it is. And this is what we were talking about on trying to increase your damage multiplier by another plus one on rolls of 19 or 20. That's a must have. The barbarian feats come up once you start taking the class uh, in the game as you level up. So. Because I got power attack, I can use cleave that comes from it. Good thing about cleave is it resets the timers on the other cleaves for barbarians. Or has or has a chance if you are in a different epic destiny than Fury of the Wild, Legendary Dreadnought, it will help to reset those timers. And then... On the race side or wizard side, I use the wizard feats along the way to take wizard base spellcasting feats. Extend spell, heighten, mental toughness, and I did take toughness once, it looks like. So th that's one of the hard things, too, is w once you get completionist, you're burning a feat for the completionist feat. So I did take that if I can find my racial past lives, but... And there's the completionist. Um, the other choice was actually to take the barbarian um past life in place of that blinding speed and get some additional hit points but you also get another rage clicky to boost your strength when you're in attack things so that is something that i was maybe gonna experiment with too 
but I didn't get a chance on this build. Uh, in the Iconic, this is what's available for me. You can see I don't have any Gnome or Maximum Shatterkite lives. But the Purple Dragon Knight Clicky, I got it twice and I have it slotted. And the good thing is, is that you can still use the Clicky while another past life is on. So that's something of note that people got to watch. If you switch off to from the Morning Lord to the Shatter Kai, it's either or. So that's still good. You can still use Rally and Cry when you're on your buddies. Get them moving. And those are my racial past lives currently. A long way to go. Okay, spells. I... And I don't even have two level three spells loaded. A lot of this becomes useless later at the higher levels. Now, just to get it playable, I ran ran out and got the, the base spells, and I still didn't finish even putting in the, the other possibilities. So uh, level one spells for Wizzy later in the game, like I said, useless. Maybe the jump if some poor cleric needs it. Tumble, uh, Merfolk's Blessing, and Detect Secret Doors. I even forget that this is here because we're usually playing with rogues or artificers or people that can actually are really good at looking for traps and stuff. I can switch over to Epic Goggles of Time Sensing for a better search, and sometimes I get lucky and find... You know, secret door if we need to. That search only comes up to 50. So, and then I have an invisibility for me. In case you're trying to run through the Tempest Spine uh, first part and you don't want to blast all those guys. The first lesser death aura. Uh... This gust of wind clicky in case bad effects come up on the party in melee sequences. My own blur, which I actually need now. I do not have a blur item, so I use this quite a bit. Uh, knock. If I had to go knock a door. Tier 3 displacement. Haste and range. Tier 4. These are very important. The negative energy burst, which heals me. Uh, fire shield uh, for when it's needed. And this is also a cold shield. You get to pick. Dimension door. And uh, death aura. Second death aura. I had this other cyclonic blast loaded. And we're not really interested in doing damage that way. Can't cast it down here. And I did load Cloud Kill just to fill the slot and teleport. Tier 6 uh, is Greater Heroism. 10 is Transformation. And True Seeing. Now, I say that most of these spells are useless because items in the game later on are, are giving you all these bonuses, most of them. Like, you can get a set of boots for greater heroism. Um, tensors you can do from scrolls or uh, from the enhancements tree on the tier. If you took the Eldritch Knight Wizzy up, it already is its own permanent tensors. So you don't even have to bother casting it in this case. But the drawbacks of taking a tier 5 Eldritch Wiz are you don't you're not gonna get that melee output like focus wrath so I'm spec to cast it as a spell and then and then uh, go pound away for the next two minutes or whatever now other barbarians like the dude in the video that we we're talking about he's using a scroll 
and it grants some pretty substantial bonuses, even for dex-based tunes. I mean, a plus four alchemical bonus to strength, dexterity and constitution, a plus six alchemical bonus to armor class, and proficiency with all simple and martial weapons. Then, oh, obviously, both these auras, and I'll click these on right now, I have extended and I have a heightened on them. And for my feet, I also took um, Master of Death or Master of, of the Dead. And what this is doing is raising the caster level of those specific spells, Death Aura and Negative Burst and Chill Touch, but I don't have Chill Touch loaded. Now, this is showing that my Lesser Death Aura does not have that bonus on it, but I needed it to take it for the heals, self-healing. And in my, I will turn both these on now. First one is Death Aura, and they both run at the same time. So the 16 and then the 18 that just came up is the greater and the lesser. When those numbers go fat, that means that you rolled a critical on it. See how big those numbers got? 175. And then. If I really need, like if I did get hit, I will do the burst. It's only at 218. Two twelve. I saw it crit for four hundred, but probably spend all day down here. There it is, five twenty-five. It's a lot better if you really need to bring your hit points back as best you can. Now I Reaper, all this is nerfed because it counts as a self-heal. So these numbers go down substantially. On my character sheet, stats, and this is hovering over the negative spell power. It's at about 422. And the critical chance on it is at 38. So almost, I mean, you're getting, you're over 35% chance to do a critical on those. Also of note, the auras will crit individually. It's not on the initial cast, it's per, per tick. And you can see on my combat log that's at the top of my screen, when it has greater effect or less, as well as the visual on screen. Where is that? Melee power standing, 118. Double strike standing, whatever, uh, 13. Melee attack speed bonus, 15. That's coming off of your haste. I think, well, I can't see the numbers for the bypass deflection. That's the amount that your strikes go through uh, their their fortification so if i buff up i have an order to all of the things that happen because of the timers in the upper left up here like tensors is only lasting for i can't see it either because the recording uh icon is above it for like two minutes and 30 seconds i have this extended Um, so then, because I don't need the haste, I do tensors. GH is giving me, I don't know, about 10 minutes, 11, 12, 12 minutes. I don't have a, a true scene clicky, I don't think, or item on, so I give that to myself too, just to be able to hit displaced creatures. Both the improved shield... And the mage armor 
both auras. And the longest length on those two auras corresponds with the length of the Tensor's transformation and displacement. So I use that as a visual usually on screen. When my aura stops, it means my Tensor's came off and I'm not pushing my maximum possible strength up. So... It is one of the drawbacks of the, of the character is that you have to maintain your maximum possible thing, uh, possible strength bonuses and everything at the point of the attack in the game. Um, otherwise you're down here bare at usually 75 strength or so and you can see that your damage output isn't as high as what it, its potential is. You have to time it right. So there's a lot of clickies with this build that you, it's almost like you're constantly monitoring uh, everything going on and timing. So I don't really recommend it for beginner players or first or second lifers. The, the heals I mean, to get that negative, to get that negative spell power up, I mean, I'm getting a bonus from the feats and from the past life feats times three is another 30 negative spell power. So if you're on a first or second life and your negative heals down here are, are only around 300, you know, that drops all of the healing capabilities that you have and you're, you're gonna get hit by something you know somewhere along the line and also because of all the clickies and everything most new players are just like well point click and shoot that's it I don't want to have to worry about all the rest of that watching your rages watching your frenzy adrenaline overload shot so speaking of which, I will head into the Epic Destinies. And I will go to a map view. No, tree view. I'm in Fury of the Wild. And I did this specifically for the uh, Unbridled Fury and Adrenaline Shot Fury, whatever this Fury Eternal will recharge. The adrenaline shots are down here, and I have it up to the tier f uh, five on it. Adrenaline overload. Now, when you pop this thing, you get like uh, I don't know, like 20 seconds or so to to use one of your biggest hits available to really do some extreme damage. Um, it's your next attack has 400% damage based on your first original die roll. And that's why I'm in this fear. Now, if I went over to the Dreadnought, there's no way with your Twist of Fate to twist in these strikes down here. So the benefit with the Legendary Dreadnought is showing with the Great X is the Devastating Critical and the Headman's Chop. That it adds up to another plus two to your critical damage multiplier, but you won't get Adrenaline Strikes. Now, just because I was watching that guy's uh, video and I said, well, maybe I'll try to get the biggest hit critical hit that I can with the melee. Um, I, I was thinking originally, like, get that great X multiplier up to like the times nine or times 10 range and hope to roll a 20. Well, in that guy's video, he's running around in Fury of the Wild and using the adrenaline strike to hit those big numbers. And then the drawback 
is like either way, these two Epic Destiny trees, one's going to give you the big hit on the, on the adrenaline shot, and then the other one's going to give you bigger hits on 19s and 20s. And I found out that the damage on this particular build for the Legendary Dreadnought um, wasn't as high on that extreme critical as the adrenaline shot so i moved over to the fury the drawback is i lose two on my critical multiplier for the great axe on 19s or 20s die rolled so that's something that i'm going to go experiment with on my next uh build probably next life currently i believe that my die roll on a 20 with gear is coming up to a base times four for the rift maker as i'm hovering over it and plus two for the barbarian uh fifth tier which is six and one for overwhelming critical which is seven now as i said if i if i flip over to the other destiny that would be a maximum of, of times nine. Because you gain two from Hedgeman Chop and Devastating Critical. So just so you know, I didn't want to I didn't want to be spending time talking about potential builds uh, for later. Just wanted to try and focus in on this one right now for what we're doing. In the twists, I have twisted in all five of my tier well four out of the five twists for things from the uh legendary dreadnought this is action boost haste improved power attack tier two critical damage and extra action boost and then I also took interrogation on tier one from the cleric tree uh, from Divine Crusader. There's nothing in here slotted to heal um, because I am undead healing. I don't have all those uh, whatever all these are fast healing and uh, healing spring like a lot of players do on the other side. That's another sort of benefit to doing this sort of build is you don't have to worry so much about your twists. And you can see, I didn't even take fast healing here because it works on only the living. Primal Scream on the bottom is a definite must. I cannot cast this out of game. I'll take a drink there. I can't cast this in a wilderness area or whatever, like in downstairs in the boat here. But this is giving you a plus five morale bonus to strength and con for three minutes, as well as the secondary effect of a, a potential of 600 sonic damage to mobs around you. So back to character sheet. With all those th things on, um, f if I go back and rebuff, and I'm doing all these in my little particular order, probably forgot something. Um, I click gloves of the Titan's grip after Tenzers and before Rage, Rage and Frenzy. You can see that that strength number comes up to 90 without Primal Scream. I'll release my Rage and use the manual Rage quickly. What did I miss just now? And that number goes up to 92 is, I think, what I try to get to. And there would be three added on this from the non-stacking primal screen. So 95 is my maximum 
potential strength. And quickly while that's on, go over your melee power. It's about 123. So another very short window there of opportunity to to try and use your adrenaline overload to hit a target within that amount of time. Now, adrenaline overload, I don't know, I can't see the timer. It's only 15 seconds or so in the window that you want to try and, and hit target. And it's recharging down here because I'm down in the uh, ship hold. Now, I can't cast right now while I'm raged out. You can see I'm getting the warning. So again, you want to cast all your spells and everything before you pop your main rage here. Get to that 95 if you can, or 92 down here. So the benefit is, though, too, in rage form, is you can release that rage without the benefit, without the loss of barbarian fatigue. Wraith is immune to that effect. Barbarians don't get don't get their uh, immunity to that. I think until level eighteen, but we didn't take eighteen levels of barbarian on this. Only six. So I'm gonna start that sequence again. see on my combat log other things are kicking in when that rage hits like from the epic destiny tree here it is it's showing me that when i hit the normal rage spell that my insight bonuses to heal listen spot search concentration and wisdom are all coming up so this counts outside of the adrenaline shot that's kind of good news I'm going to show you the rest of the bonuses come up. I don't like this right here. When it does that, I'd rather just see numbers and attacks. But that's just me. So I'll do my max strength there. I will do the adrenaline strike. Walk up to the training dummy. And pop it. What am I missing? That was only 8,9. 8,900. There's a 17-4 non-crit. Die roll was only a 15. There's a 28. Die roll of a 17. And again, that's using the adrenaline strike. And then you're praying for a die roll of a 19 or 20 to get that big raw number. Sixteen four five roll of a sixteen. I'll scroll back through here. There's the it's listed as a sneak attack. Twenty eight three four zero. Oh. My highest hit is on my on my bio. It was a twenty nine eight so far, and I say so far it's because I still have some room to improve um, gear wise to raise that strength and melee power higher. Uh, I still have not decided. I will open up my inventory page um, on the final gear layout. And I, what am I, where am I headed here? Thousands and thousands of bags and axes. Um, 
I have currently, I'm wearing the Battle Rager's harness. And it's given me a rage bonus to saves versus enchantments and the potential to do another 10d6 piercing damage on it. The other abilities on this particular item are if you're being hit. So it's almost like a defensive thing. It's a great item for a tank, true tank build. Um, and the Intimidate, I'm not really, I mean, sometimes I Intimidate. I don't even have it loaded in my hotbar. I get aggro just because of swinging away. Now, if I'm planning on playing with uh, the people in my guild in party, probably loaded up down here somewhere to try and help them out keeping some of the aggro off of them. The other item that I slot in my belt is the legendary festering mummy wraps, and that's giving you a negative healing amplification of plus 72. It's And the light resistance for that god-awful light damage you sometimes get. Because I'm already fortified, with my armor at 202, this is a Barovian plate mail. Um, I don't need to have this uh, gem slotted in here for heavy fortification. I could probably put something else in there too to get more. Now we're going to look at my hit points with this item on. And it's showing a negative healing amplification of 92 so I've been trading off in game between that Battle Rager's harness and and that uh, Festering Mummy Wraps item, and you can see that my negative healing amp drops significantly. So I haven't decided yet on the end gear layout at all. Um, this is not negative 20 is not going to cut it for reaper difficulty and that's you know also one of the drawbacks too is if you do not have other players in the group to help you heal on reaper you're pretty much screwed so before when i had the the rs clicked uh we were registering I'm not sure, 220 and 500, but a crit with that belt on is coming up to 800 on the negative energy burst. So it's a pretty substantial amount of healing that I would be giving up if I changed to the harness. So just to show that tick, everybody's always worried about their own heals. On the character sheet, the last thing I wanted to go over was this fortification number. 318. That's because the base 202 from the armor is stacking with the race form. So that's a great number there. Um, and I'll open up my inventory and go back to that Barovian armor. Its base is showing 202 for it. So the other, whatever, 16 points in there are just from past lives. Probably that brace or whatever one of these over here. And then I don't have any spell resistance per se. So... That's another thing I wanted to work on maybe with gear is to get a spell resistance item. A lot of clerics still cast the uh, group or mass spell resistance. And it's only to get out of hold spells from casters. Or, you know, will effects, hypnotism. My will saves are not that great for the epic level at 51. And the reflex isn't that great, but we're not really dodging anything. You're just going to take it.
the heavy armor as shown and I'm hovering my mouse over it again up at the top is showing the spell failure uh, 15 percent but the blue slot is slotted with the sapphire spell agility to make up that other 15 percent if you are over it it will show a warning on your cast spells here it will have a little red warning and show the percentage of spell failure still existing so I've brought that down to where it's it there's nothing to worry about however it does take up your blue slot to have that in there. So just a reminder. Main goal at this point is to try to get up to 100 strength. I'm still wearing some pieces of legendary uh, Slave Master set that I set up for the Deadly. Um... In this, you know, I don't know yet. There's another cloak that would fit in here to help your heal amp if you wanted to go over to the Battle Rager's Harness. And it's the Death Worm Cloak. <sighs> it looks like on these sets that if I completed the Knight of Shadow set and... I'm wearing one item right now just because I had a free slot open for it. The Adherent of Mist set. It will help your repair for the negative or your positive negative and repair application by giving a profane bonus. Uh, there's another 20 there. So I would, you know, there's something that I have to work out here to get both these set bonuses going. Um, to help out that heal amp if I decide to swap over gear. And the problem is with this belt then at that point is this is a profane bonus as well. So it's not going to stack with that set bonus. So it's almost forcing me to get rid of that sometime. The quality intelligence plus four. I don't even have an intelligence item on right now. All of the... All of the intelligence bonuses started at a 10. And then you add in the tome. And then another 4 point from the quality bonus. And that's where I'm at right now with the 30. The intelligence is only helping you to get spell points on this particular build. You're not focused on all kinds of uh, DCs for casting. Oh, it's something I could experiment with later, too, for gear. Uh, the other problem is I don't craft. So my insightful bonus for my strength is coming off of my bracers right now. And that's an insightful plus seven. That's what's helping to get my strength up that high. And then it's also my con item. So there's still room to move on on the constitution, which is your hit point. And find a way to rework so that you have an insightful strength item. The main strength and quality is still coming off of this older slaver's ring. There's a 17 base and a quality strength. And my nullification spell power right now at 185. So again, there's room to move on the nullification uh, spell power. Which will help your personal heals later. There's a 202 item available. And the newer items have higher strength. So I really had to do a lot of work on getting that out. Wearing the Pendant of the Storm Reaver. And one piece from the Avatai, and that's just to get the extra damage on. It's just to get the extra damage on a 20. Both these show two different values. When I hit a 20, I believe I posted a picture on our guild, a still shot uh, of hitting a 20 and all of these bonuses coming up. 
Penny the Storm Reaver does Sonic and Electric on the strike. Pretty cool. Even though it's level 25 item. Um, the Dragon Mask. I have my Festive Intelligence in there. Blindness Immunity. But I like this item for the Deadly and for the extra 2 to 12 negative damage that comes up. Per strike. Once I rework the, the symbol of the slavers in my trinket slot, um, I believe there's an item in Barovia that also adds another 2 to 12 good damage or holy to your strikes. I'm probably going to be wearing that because I like to have the secondary damage types as a melee. The set of shackles from the slavers is giving me a quality constitution wizardry heal and void lore so i don't have a fifth piece of the slavers set right now for another bonus to strength because i'm phasing this out to try and find something that's going to work with my gear lame, uh, uh, alignment and sapphire defense 14 mm -hmm. you know you can upgrade all this but just in terms of trying to get it ready for level 30 big questing uh, th that's just what I'm running with right now so I can use this to do Bob's raid and Strahd and finish out Barovia to collect gear for other characters. And that's it. I think I've covered just about everything. I have a whole alignment of different various axes and and other equipment things down here if the need arises. But I don't like to brag about all the loot that's coming in. One of the things I've also tried to work on uh, lately is from the Shroud is trying to get a Uzbane Great Axe together. And I didn't even start this one for that. Or ooze producing Great Axe. I don't prefer to use these now with the Sentient. The Sentient Gem. And the Morning Lord's Great Axe was not registering critical hits as of uh, yesterday. Meaning every single hit on a training dummy was being resisted. And I don't know why. I think there's something broken there. Um, I don't use it because there's times three multiplier only on it. Its base is lower. Its actual damage rating is You higher. will call on me again, and soon. Showing a 82.50, but its critical roll multiplier is less. And again, I was trying to get the biggest hit that I could possibly get, so I didn't finish even building the axe. And the issue was not hitting crits, not registering. So my Together, primary, our power will grow. My primary is the is the F epic rift maker, and I had this one loaded with my sentient gem. Sentient gem is not possible to be placed in legendary green steel, so it's almost like I'm crafting axes there that are just for flavor or for spice. And I've had some discussions with guildies about making a two weapon, a dual wielder of some sort, because it enables you to have your sentient item in one hand and whatever offhand effect you want in your other hand. Or another item, another type of whatever weapon that you want. That's the drawback of going with a single weapon fighter. Now, you cannot slot two separate um, gems. It's only going to take the one from your offhand in terms of the sentient. So 
uh, you know, you would obviously carry one with the sentient gem and then whatever else you wanted. I don't know at this point uh, what the max critical damage is from something uh, like with a heavy pick user, but uh, it's something that I'm looking to experiment with later. And then down here, just some basic tanking stuff, should you have to do it, is one of the weapon sets. And I've put in the Sky Vault Shield just because I get over Arcane Spell Failure. You can see it's not showing when I have that equipped. It's Mithril. You're not going to be trying to do very much damage here in this form. Armor class goes, what, 136, 134 PRR, and 54 Magical Resistance. non tender when you tender that number goes up 143 156 54 so again as a tank like this you're not going to be evading anything really you are going to be maximizing your usage of the displacement and blur and then you are also in corporal so and i do not have a dusk item for another 10% right now. But that's three chances for them to miss you initially in combat anyway. You have made a wise decision. Our destiny awaits. Anyway, that's it for my video. Thanks.